Guys, I just want to give you a reminder to head to Scuff Gaming on Twitter right now to enter for a chance to win a CDL Scuff Impact Controller. We are back, of course, and CDL is the championship match, and I am so excited here. CDL Game Day presented by Game Fuel, of course. Um, so yes, yeah, super, super excited. I am with the best in the business when it comes to my analysts. I got TP today. I got Nameless today, as every day, and I'm so hype about it. And of course, our two finalists, which are Dallas Empire versus Atlanta phase. What could you want more out of your finals here at the Call of Duty League? Incredible stuff across the board. Both of these teams have been so vigorous in their journeys to get here all season long. Both have been at the top of their game constantly. And now it's the decider. We, we see exactly who is gonna reign supreme, who is gonna take this. We do know, of course, that Dallas haven't been the most consistent when it comes to, of course, Atlanta FaZe. And FaZe have had the one up, but previously, yesterday, we saw that Dallas were capable of taking down a FaZe when it means the most. We're into our game view keys to victory, of course, headed up by yours truly nameless. So talk to me about this one. Yeah, continue the momentum. Stay strong early on in the hard point and get a leg up in the marathon. Clayster has the highest KD of all players remaining. He boasts a 1.18 leading the way. Typically, he's been the X factor in the FaZe series in both series where he has played well against them they have won another thing to keep your eye on though is Shotzi he had rough games three and four yesterday which could be a little bit scary in a longer series you're gonna need him to be on point because he is that main slayer who has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best SMGs in the game I think my big point I want to bring up too I got my eyes on Crim6 if you look at champs last time he won he didn't have a good Sunday at all right he's gonna try and make his way back and have a way better performance than back to BO4 champs if he can step up today and continue the performance he's been putting on so far throughout playoffs and champs weekend they're in a really good spot yeah they certainly had a good Saturday that is for sure he was dropping 30 plus bombs okay. all over the place. Took it over was, it was sick. Yep. Yeah, he did indeed. Uh, Game Fuel Keys to Victory for Atlanta Face, bro. You know what to do. Yeah, focus on the hard point. They were 1 and 3 in hard point yesterday overall and 0 oh and 2 versus Dallas. You heard Simply in the interview. He said, in these tense situations, we need to focus up and close it out, right? The game four, it could have been there as they end up choking it. And Simp knows he underperformed in both of those hard points. It came down to final moments on game four. You need a better performance from him and better team decision in those moments. Come from the horse's mouth, I, I got to go with it. Great points there. A big thing to note too, Dallas Empire is a team that's been performing well while getting out slayed sometimes. So maybe if you're phased, when you get down to those late game situations, slow it down and focus on the fundamentals. We've seen so many hard points go down to the wire where these teams are not making, you know, uh, you know, consistent decision making when it comes to rotating the late hard points. So you might be up in kills, but at the end of the game, that all that stuff goes out the window. You got to play good team call of duty. Can phase do it? It's kind of crazy, actually, how much they have been outslayed in the past seven matches we have seen. Like, two of their players have uh, have hit a, a, a 1.0 KD, of course, but then Atlanta Fates had four players in the seven matches hit a 1.0, which is... It is kind of wild to see that that kind of contrast there, but they've still managed to do it a couple of times, and it all comes down to this match, so we'll see where the gun bite takes us, guys, but... It is time to do our predictions brought to you by Sony's Xperia smartphone. And I'm going to start off with Teep. Teep, what, what are you taking for this one? This is a really, it's tough. really important it's, prediction, it's by the way. A very important one. It's stressful. <laughs> I feel like either way, you're going to be thinking about the other side. But I'm going to go. It's going the distance. I'm going with that one for sure. And I actually went with Phase down to the wire in a, in a last map victory. And the reason I'm going with that is the stats leading towards their second or third game types in whatever mode, whether it be Domination or S&D in particular, the, the, all the data points in their direction. I think hard points, you know, we've seen Dallas recently look so damn good in the hard points. I think those ones are going to be a wash, basically a coin flip. But those other maps in those modes, I think are going to give them the very, very slight edge to win this one. Okay, I like it. Nameless, where, where are you heading with this? Uh, I'm leading over towards Dallas. I think they're going to take this one 5-4. I also have it going the distance. And the reason being is we're seeing a brand new Clay and also an improved Krim, right? Like, I think these guys are, are the difference when it comes to that data where they can prove it wrong because that's new. We haven't seen that throughout the season, them be this consistent. I think they can get them through this series. Okay, well, I really took my time deciding this one. I'm really, really struggling. Like you said, team, you can make an argument for both sides here. I eventually went with 5-4 Dallas. Again, it's going to go the distance. These two teams know exactly how to face each other. And I think it's going to be a battle of the ages. Um, but ultimately, I just felt like yesterday, from what I saw out of Atlanta phase, despite the stats, the pressure looked like it got to them a little bit. And I think they were looking a little shaky. And then a champs version of Clay and Krim, that's terrifying. That's very, very scary. And I think that that confidence is going to ooze into the rest of their team. 
and they might be actually taking this championship. So I'm really excited to uh, to hand this over right now. So of course, your two casters are going to be heading up this match. It is the one and only Maven and Merc. You've had them all season long. They're an absolutely incredible duo, and I'm really excited to hear them take this final. So, gents, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Lottie. You guys killed it. Now, Joe, we are ready to go. It is time for the CDL Championship match. And man, this is interesting because you and I have been looking through kind of the stats for this and the maps and modes and, and where we're going. And I think we both kind of left thinking, this has got potential to be a banger, like a marathon, yeah. really go the distance. Can you kind of talk at a high level about why you think that can happen? Well, I, I think you just look at their recent matchups. Uh, obviously, yesterday <laughs> went to went to a game five. Uh, if you look at their matchup at Toronto, uh, week thirteen, it was a three zero, but it was like a ten point hard point uh, round eleven. Basically, these two have been performing and getting better, and they're starting to match up. And, and it's just it comes down to a couple of plays, game to game. And when that is happening, you have so much talent on both sides. Where I think we are going to go the distance. I think everybody thinks that. I think we're going to be really sad if it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, so that's why uh, I just think that these teams are at their peak right now, and that's what you want to see—the two best teams in the world. Well, let's take a look now at our game field featured player. It is going to be Clayster, and my God, did he have some clutches! and individual moments of brilliance yesterday. Uh, yeah, he'll catch some flack from being the old man. Every now and then, he's going double negative. But for this title, <laughs> he has been consistent for the most part. Like, he's had a couple off events, but like he's sure. been frying, man. And he has been clutch. Like, when it comes to the big moments, he's been big. And I think like more than your regular matchup, you're playing like a Gorillas or Surge or somebody. When you're playing against the best team in the world, it usually comes down to those moments. Uh, I think what you're really seeing from Dallas Empire and especially Clay is we talk about sort of this veteran mentality in the way they are preparing for matchups. Like you saw it yesterday, like game five, Ramaza, the way he was playing around construction. Clay is one of those guys where in big moments, he sort of calms himself down. He's settled. Yes, he's bringing the communication, but he lets the game come to him sometimes. And I think that is where, uh, you know, his experience really shines through. You see the stats here, search and destroy. He's been big. The response, he's been big. But, but yeah, it's just about that experience. He's going for back-to-back -back rings. This guy knows what he needs to do in these big moments. We'll take a look now at the social soundboard. This is from Karma. If Clay wins tomorrow, he's the 5v5 boogeyman. And yeah, he's found these squads with you know a, a ton of young talent. You think that back uh, last year, he ends up on that team with Abizi and Simp. I know uh, Simp comes in kind of late in the year or middle of the mm -hmm. year for J-Cap, but he's got these young, talented players around him. And then this year, obviously, with the newcomers in Shotzi and Illy, to these just young, dominant, dominant players that he's playing alongside. This perfect mix with their squad that seems to be flowing so, so well. We'll see if Clay can do it again, but it is time to now introduce our teams. First off, let's take a look at the Dallas Empire. The Dallas Empire very well may be the best team in the Call of Duty League. To play. Who goes huge? What are these search rounds go? Once again, Empire steal around. I'm a is ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, burn it up. Burn it up. Yeah, you know I'm coming for the crown. And we don't play around. You better get out my way. We have covered this roster card many times this year because, well, they keep making deep runs in tournaments. They had three home series wins. Shotzi, Prim, Clay, Illy, Hoop the Nuke, stacked from top to bottom. Uh, yeah, just headlined, obviously, by Krim and Clay, the veterans, two of the most winning players in Call of Duty history. But then it's followed up by three of the most talented individuals that we have in our league. Uh, you know, and I think they all took a step forward. They're all learning from one another. That's why they're in this position. Well, they're in a good position. Up a map, getting ready to head into the final match of this entire year. And what a treat it is going to be. But their opposition looking for revenge and filled to the brim with talent of their own. It is Atlanta phase. Let's meet the roster. Atlanta looking to make a statement.
Have we even seen the peak of his ability? One, two, three for Major Maniac. Selium is the best player in the game. He might be the MVP if he keeps it Stay up. Stay man. Faze came out the year firing on all cylinders. Major Maniac, Celium, Simp, Priesta, Abizi. Joe, what makes this team special? Uh, they are just so talented from top to bottom. There's not really a weakness. Everybody can do it all. Yeah, when we first saw this roster form, we're like, that's the one. That could be the one, and they have an opportunity to be number one. Well, we saw the predictions come in from our analysts and hosts and Lottie. It's time for us to get to our Sony Xperia smartphone predictions. Joe, how do you see this shaking out? So I went, uh, we are asked this before we see maps or anything. I went 5-3 Dallas Empire. But I will say to you, I am a little bit nervous. The first five maps are the exact same that we saw from yesterday's series. I didn't expect that. Uh, and this worries me. Why? Because I thought Dallas outprepared Atlanta face. Plain and simple. But what adjustments can Atlanta phase make in these first five maps? That's going to really be the big question. I'm going to stick with Dallas, but I'm a little bit worried. I went 5-4 phase, and uh, I was torn on this because I'm contesting the point. I had to make the argument for why phase would win, and they've been more consistent and solid in the finals at the home series events, right? Like, they've closed them out where we've seen phase come up short a lot, but I picked phase to win it at the beginning. I'm sticking with my gut. I'm going phase in an absolute marathon. Uh, I am just hoping we get an incredible series. But you talked about the maps and modes. Let's take a look through it now and how this is going to play out. Because when you take a look early in this, and we talked about the fact that it's the same five maps to start this off. Basically, it's the same order, right? Like when you go Cave, yep. Gunrunner, Petro, Gunrunner, Ramaz, that's what we saw same in the thing. winner's bracket final. Same thing. Uh, I know that... We saw what Empire win that map on Caves, but it's very good for FaZe. Typically, that's been a very strong map for them, not for Empire. You look at the first couple of maps, it looks really, really good for FaZe. But as the series gets deeper, the series goes longer, it gets better and better for Empire. Give me a shootout, Joe. I need a shootout. Uh, I think that's what we all want. Uh, but as you said, yeah, it, a, a lot is around these first three maps. Can Dallas take one? They were able to steal, what, th that is your cave, which was such a big story. You know, Krim had a great map. We saw the, the Graw come out from Shotzi, really focusing uh, on the fourth and fifth hill. So we'll have to keep our eyes on that. But I think really the big story between these two, they've matched up so many times. Dallas, they have the advantage in hardpoint. They're, you know, six to five in the series. But where do Atlanta phase really come in strong? It's domination where they're six and one. You know, I are seven and one. I think that it's seven and three in their favor in search and destroy. I think you heard Nameless talk about it. Their hard point has to be better. They have an opportunity to completely dismantle Dallas Empire if they can fix their mistakes. Absolutely. I mean, these first three maps, again, the reason they're big, Dallas two and six on Cave, 11 and six on Gunrunner Search, but 0 and three versus Atlanta, two and four on Petrodon, but 0 and two versus Atlanta. If they can get one of these map wins, how massive it would be, but let's get it rocking. It is time for the CDL Championship match, Empire phase, rolling right back into Cave and Joe from the Winner's Dragon Final. Considering we saw this for the map one, what really stood out for you? What was the big key for you in that first map? Uh, well, it's what we've talked about with Atlanta Faze's hardpoint. Uh, the past couple of months, their ability to hold. Uh, when they get these early rotations yesterday, you know, after the first set, what, it was a 90, 100-point lead? And then we saw the strategy come out for Dallas Empire, where they would give up a hill early, rotate. If that doesn't happen, if Atlanta Faze can hold those hills, you know, who knows? Who knows what happens yesterday? Yeah, we'll keep an eye when we get to, like, Cave Side West on how Empire play it. Because, yeah, they were really putting everything into holding that right side of the map for, like, three straight hard points. And we'll see if that's what continues. But nice points early for Empire. Kill feed all going their way as well. It'll be phase inside of Cave Side East. And this is going to be a prime example of this. So, phase are going to give up a lot of time at this point. They're going to be set up early in a great position. But if they get broken, it could be the same spot again where you end up with a 70-point well. advantage for Empire. Well, they might not be in a great position. Who is that? Illy with some nice shots. Simto is going to recover. He's going to take down two. Krim trying to play his life right now. 
trying to play for spawns, trying to play for rotation. But Atlanta Phase, okay, they slow things down. They deal with the players trying to put pressure on the spawns. Now it's all about the front hit. How does Dallas Empire want to break through? Well, let's see what they can do. Trying to hit it the mid alley, mid alley, and the west side of the cave. I think it's Hook that's able to take down one. Could be an opening, but Abizi is able to pick that up. Abizi has been so so strong, and he keeps it going here as he does shut down two. Now the pressure that a major maniac inside of the point. He's going to need some help as he's trying to lock down the time. The flood has gotten here from Empire. The spawns haven't flipped, but they've gotten enough kills to get phase spawning in the back and get into the point. This is great from Empire. Yeah, and now they're going to trap them through. We're going to head to Soccer Field next. This would be on the bottom side of your mini map. You see Illy, our number two. He's going to be locking things on. And you're sort of in a trap right now. You do have 10 seconds before the next hill pops. Maybe you can gain some ground if you're at Atlanta Phase. Simp, we know what he can do. Nine and five. Just finished on a four spree. But three, go down four. Go down hoop the nuke. Going big. Can he find number five? He can. Up to 12 and four. He's been the MVP for me for Dallas Empire. He's been so clutch, so consistent, and he is keeping it going right now. Up to seven in a row. Finally, we'll drop, but think about those kills. It was Clayster with a triple to kind of pin phase back at the first point. Then as the transition's coming in, you get five from Hook. Like, FaZe just didn't have a chance. They're just now getting towards the point. There's 30 seconds remaining in it, but they're able to rebound with a bit of authority to stay in this game and only be down 20. But what an individual moment of brilliance from Clayster and Hook. Now FaZe will try to answer back. You take a look at that number zero and Abizi already rotating all the way over to Cave Side West, making sure he's getting set up for next. How many members will he have to deal with? But we'll stay focused for now on the current hard point as the final seconds begin to tick off. Now, eyes well, over to Abizi. Yeah, and this is something I want to focus on. Watch the blue arrows and how they play this, right? Because uh, their goal is try to get the right side of the minimap because they want spawns for cliff and and now you're seeing a good example of it where okay they actually do get the spawns atlanta phase are getting a lot of time here dallas is not close to this and this is how they played it yesterday if they get some time here great but it's almost like they're giving up 40 to 50 seconds they just want to hold the, the, the final hill. You're going to see Shotzi pull out a Graw, and they're going to get set up. Well, yeah, and, and the reason for this is, like, if you're a new viewer, it's not just for the next hard point at Outpost, which, yes, is on the right side of the map, but that works when we get the second set of rotation for first. It sets them up for Cave Side East as well. It's like, it's basically, you want to hold that right side of the map for almost three, four straight minutes. It is a massive advantage, and we'll see if they can continue to hold on to it. But, yeah, Shotzi with that Graw definitely stood out yesterday, but we get over to our Game Fuel featured player for a moment. We'll stick with play through a couple of respawns and see what he can get going, but it's Priesta with five in a row that gets up to 12 and 12. And, and well, so FaZe is going to get this 20-point lead. They get a majority of the time. And you know, they've talked about they like being the break team. Can they break it here? Because this was the strategy that Dallas revolved around. You're going to see Shotzi number five all the way back in that building, locking things down. Everybody winning their one-on-ones. All the M4s lighting up the feed, and I mean, it's just a great hold so far. They find the first 20 seconds. What we really want to look at is it was, what, about a 15-point advantage for FaZe? Like, after the next three hard points, basically after, what, Cave Side East, like, what's the difference? What's the separation? Mm -hmm. They put all of that into it, let FaZe get 40 to 50 points. Now, what is kind of that plus minus once they get through these three points which favor that side of the map? But now Hoop's really hot. He has stayed hot. Five in a row again for him. Out to 21 and 12 as he's looking to get hunting inside of Caves. But Simp there, ready with the read and able to lock him down. But how clean that was from Empire. And well, any phase lead has been blown away. And now they're in a position where there's always the opportunity where you can get trapped if you're a Dallas Empire. But with Illy's spot inside of this building, he's going to be able to put pressure on this hill as soon as it pops. It's like, yeah, I mean... I mean Atlanta Phase just sort of, I, I don't know. It feels like at times they aren't really sure how to play against this Dallas, Dallas Empire and their strategy moving forward. But it always helps when you have Hook, who's going on five sprees, is 22 and 12. Uh, you're only down 30, which is much better than the deficit you were in yesterday. But it's just going to come down to a couple of key fights. And when we go back to that Cliff Hill, I'm just curious. Can Atlanta Phase break that setup? Can they stop it from happening? Yeah. Now remember, it was what, one in six on this particular map for Empire coming into the winner's bracket final. It beat FaZe here yesterday. Now a chance to do it again. That is screaming preparation for this particular roster. But they've done a good job trying to contest towards mid, make sure FaZe don't get all of the points as they 
have brought it back a bit closer. Now down about 15 points. But now the big battles are going to start to go down inside a cave. The point man for now with the M4. Now going to be Major Maniac because he's already able to take down Illy. Illy already back in the mix off spawn. But some huge fights now about to go down towards our next hard point. And if you locked out all this time and pushed this out for like a 60 point lead, it was all worth it, right? It was all worth it if you're Empire. But if he get broken, not going to be the case. And then, well, that might be the break. Four going to go down. They're searching on through. It's three in a row for Selium. Shotzi trying to get back into the mix. Some nice movement there to at least take down one. And the four kills from FaZe instantly answered by four from Empire. But FaZe have done enough to at least get them out of the point. Make this a bit sloppy. And I think you, that's it, right? If you're Atlanta phase, you're not trying to get a ton of time here. I mean, you would love to earn some time. You're just trying to delay it. You know they have the good spawns. You're trying to trap them back here so you can rotate over towards soccer field and get a good majority of time there. You have the, the advantage rotating the cave side west. So uh, th this could quickly turn into an advantage for Atlanta phase. They're going to try and keep them pinned here. You see the nades coming through. Priesta wants to get out, but that's big three kills, and it's behind Hook. Already up to 29. Make that 30 is on another four spree. Allows them to get out of cave. And yeah, the pressure's already out towards the middle of the map, which is perfect for Dallas Empire. Well, think about how big Hoop was on both sides of that particular hard point. Whether it was getting the kills to kind of pin phase back or getting the kills to break out. Like, he's just going massive. A huge spots within this game. But it's Shotzi now with Dead Silence Pop trying to finesse and nearly finds another one. But Selium's got the angle to lock him down. Nobody in the point for now, but at mid-map, it was Hoop picking up yet another kill and able to apply pressure over towards the spiral side of this point. The rhythm keeps on flowing. Hoop, the nuke, literally dropping a nuke on this map right now. The man's a magician, and he's been special throughout map one. And don't forget, Clint, what we get if somebody drops 40 kills. I know chat's getting excited for some burritos, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But over to Cave Side West, Dallas Empire, they have a 45-point lead. And there we go. You see all the blue arrows. They're starting to transition over. They have this lead. They're playing around this strategy. And Atlanta FaZe play perfect from here on out. And yeah, FaZe, they're trying to pick this up. They've sent players over to deal with it, but it's like a one versus 50. It's like, like what, what do you do? <laughs> Just like not get the points on the hill, right? Exactly. Like you're going exactly. to take the hill time. Empire is putting literally zero focus in this until wrapping the entire way around the map. And now if they get a break, that's just gravy on top. If they can get a bit of contest here and hold that right side. They've already cleared phase out of the point for now. They're still spawning safe. I think it's a BZ that's going to try and maybe wrap back and disrupt this. He's going to have a one-on-one -on -one with Illy on the other side of it. And he's able to win one. That could be massive. But now if you lose this, at least if you're Empire, at least you were able to get in and chalk up some of this time. And look at number five, Chauncey. Wrapping all the way back to his spot. And he's got his crawl. He's got his kill. There's another player here in a BZ. But he's going to have two players to deal with. Meanwhile, on the hill, just so far to work with. The BZ, can he go huge? Can he go massive? Nope, it's the MVP, the regular season MVP in Shotzi. Takes down both, and guess what? He's, he's got his Grawl. He's got his house. Clayster, we were on with him earlier. Our Game Fuel featured player going to get right back in the hill. And who now four away from dropping 40. We'll see if he can get to that mark. But for Clay, can they hold this and win it here? 25 more points needed, and they can lock it down. Two already going to drop for phase. The hold seems to be going strong, but they're pinching now from both sides. Shots, these Graws connected. Two are going to drop. Priesta falls off the map. Things falling apart for phase as Empire once again seem to get it done. Now everybody will fall, but Clay at least able to pick up one of the point is Shotzi now hit five in a row just five more points needed from empire wow they play this map well I, I, yeah I, I don't know man i don't know when they implemented this strategy but uh it has worked so far i think there are a couple of ways to counter it if you're atlanta phase you need an early lead they don't have it dallas play their game and now they are up 2-0 and you can see clay getting fired up that's two times in a row where they have won a zero cave, which has been a problem for them. It's one of Atlanta FaZe's best map, and it's just crazy to watch this strategy unfold. They won it one time in six months, Joe. Yeah. Well, it, one time in maybe more than six months. Now they've won it in back-to-back -back days, and wow, is it fun to watch. What a map from Hoop. 37 kills he puts up. Ah, I didn't and for get the Clay, 40. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> for Clay, our game field feature player, two minutes and 46 seconds in the point. And what a great POV you saw at the tail end of that. Like <laughs> there was like a 30 second stretch where he'd have to shoot. Just soaking up the time, locking it down, playing his role. Phase get rolled.
Mountain. And now they're in trouble. Down 2-0 and what a massive map one victory it was because when you and I were talking about the first, what, three maps or so, we felt pretty good about Empire victory if they were able to take one. Guess what? We're one map in. They already took one. Empire in a fantastic spot. Phase, a lot of work to do. The road just got harder. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a long series, right? You have to you have to win five games. It's gonna take a lot of work. Every game has champions. No heroes at all to battle. The fight for glory. We watch and we cheer. We choose sides and pledge our allegiance. What happens when the world sees a trade? What if nothing is like what it seems? That everything you think you know is just a game. A game of wars and lies, cover-ups and disinformation. Secret operations that never took place. Feral pawns grind away their simulation. Every system has its weakness. Join me. Some learn truth. Kind of winning the fight on both fronts. It's like, I don't know. I, it was wild to see because I, I like to see Empire, or sorry, FaZe trying to make those adjustments, but then it almost went worse because then not only yeah. did they not win the rotation, but they didn't get all the time on Cave Side West, and that's sort of what sealed the deal, but... Yeah, I just don't remember. We've casted a lot of cave this year, but I, I know I know the right side of the map for almost every instance outside of like the soccer field rotation is like it has was, been the yeah. the favor the favorite spot. But I just have never seen that much emphasis on it, man. Just making sure you basically have right side spawns the entire map. But we'll get right into the U.S. Air Force quick scope. Look at how these teams have matched up all year long. They've been the top two for a reason. Phase lead in every category, but not mattering much now. Yeah, number one versus number two. It's what we talked about. Both of them working so hard to get into this position. But Dallas Empire, I don't know, dude. They, yeah, this is why I took them because... I just feel like they have a strategy. They have a game plan. You obviously need to, you know, execute that game plan. You need players like who to go off. You write shots you to, to, to know his role. But, I mean, I guess for, you know, if you're an Atlanta FaZe fan, we talked about the, the five maps being the same thing from yesterday. The next two Atlanta FaZe did win. But when you're playing the same maps over and over again, what adjustments are each side going to make? Now we head to, and that's I think I think you kind of nailed it. Yeah, what adjustments are there going to be? Um, Faze obviously not able to make the key adjustments to take this map as Empire won it yesterday. The same result basically is going to happen here. And now, if your Faze, I guess you know I was I did the talking in circle show, and I, I think I was talking to Pristini on that. And one of the reasons I think he took Empire over Faze in this, he was like, if they lose some early maps, I know the Faze can get a little bit tilted. I think he said like, I've seen a BZ's face, and I know that guy's tilted. And he thinks that can happen with him. And I guess I'm wondering if that could end up being the case here. Is if Empire just starts to frustrate them a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it could happen. I think if you look at like when we had double best of fives in the past, like the, the team coming from losers, they would win that best of five. And then the second one would come through and it would be a quick like 3-0, right? Um, but I guess for these players like a BZ and Simp, because we don't hold them to such high standards, they've been so good. They should be able to bounce back, right? Like, I don't know who's going to be that vocal leader, but stick to your game. They know they can do it. And I will say, if you thought they were tilted, they came out after losing to Empire and beat Chicago, right? So they True. know the game True. they have to play. They know how talented that they are. Just a reminder for how this plays out. Up 2-0 for your Empire. This is first of five wins. So three more map wins needed for Empire. Phase are going to have to rip off five. And maybe it starts here. Taking a look at what the gunrunner gunrunner search. Did you run through the overall stats for these guys? Because it's no, what it's 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 zero and three for Empire versus Atlanta. Like they're, they're eleven and six on. So like it's a good map for them. But they've never beaten Atlanta here. Well, but you can say eleven this, and two. Yeah, they've only lost it two times. Like yeah, this is yeah, their best yeah. search and destroy map. Well, I, that's why I guess my point there is like if you come in and win this, if you're Empire, you might have just ripped the jugular out of phase. Oh, Mr. First Blood back at it. Abizi able to get the first pick. Man advantage quickly to phase. Yeah, and yesterday uh, it was a lot of talks around the First Blood. Scrim, though, big pick on a major maniac, and they're just sort of taking their time. But what it, I think it was a 3 1 uh, lead. It was very early lead for Dallas Empire. In Atlanta phase, they made some adjustments, they stuck to their game plan. This is part of their game plan. Letting the bomb go down. Playing the four versus four retakes. Watch Illy, though, number two. Maybe trying to work a flank. We'll see if Abizi's able to catch him. They are. They just play it patiently. Now they have the man advantage. Now they have to go. Billy, 
uh, BZ with the two kills in the round, but it's Prim once again that's able to bring it back. Even Priesta, though, puts the odds back over to FaZe. Prim, can he be the guy again? Just trying to finesse around, trying to stay alive. He's able to dip away into bathrooms. There's only 20 seconds remaining on the clock. Prim and Shasti trying to get it done. Prim's able to get another kill with his knife. Priesta will lock down the final player with enough time to defuse, but Krim nearly made some magic happen. But that's Atlanta face. That's their strategy. Plant the bomb B. Uh, we, we will take our individual 1v1s. Typically, they have the man advantage. Uh, they're able to catch Ili out. That gives them the four versus three. And what's just so difficult about defending this B side is it takes a smoke to, you know, you know, uh, cover across if there's someone sniping all the way in the back from Dallas. It's tough. In Atlanta phase, they know what positions they have to take. The phase. Get the round win behind some early kills from Abizi. He gets three in the round. Starts off three and one. And now kind of his home. <laughs> in and around vent room and pipes. He loves to do damage. Two rounds in. Two first bloods for Abizi. The guy's impact early in the map is outrageous. Okay. So now this is a key for me. And that is a problem what we just saw from Priesta. Because we saw this on Ramaza. Atlanta phase. I know Gunrunner is a bit of a slower map, and these, th these things tend to happen, but you have to stick together. Use your advantages that you're earning in the rounds, because that's how they lost game five. Oh, now things starting to unravel. It was Krim that was kind of the difference maker again. He gets that pick right after the first blood, brings it back to a four versus four, and then Clayster tacks on another. And look at the flank. Look at Hook and Krim. They found the opening. Simps all the way in the back. He's not watching anything. Hook doesn't see much. The bomb is going to be planted, and you're going to have Simp all the way towards the back with a snipe. Hopefully for Dallas, they have somebody with a smoke to deal with this, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, even though you have the added man, it yeah, is not going to be easy. Nope. Now the smoke going to come over the top. Krim able to hit the shots. All down to Selim and Simp now to try and clutch. There's going to be two players pushing him in the back with a snipe. Simp's going to have to try and finesse. Able to take down one, but he will fall right after. Selim gets caught out as well outside of bathrooms in the retake. Solid from Empire. We'll tie us up 1-1, one, one, Joe. Solid from Empire. Uh, similar to what we saw from Atlanta phase. But if you're phase, you have another one of those rounds where you're kind of scratching your head. Where, where did things go wrong? A BZ earns a very tough, well, you know, first blood. Takes down Shotzi. Priesta can't go down there. These little things. These little things, Maven, and they add up. Yeah. No, I, I know you can't just, like, obviously group up completely and, yep. you know, get into a position where you're all, you have no angles, no map coverage. Like, you, you know, you need to play your spots and all. But, yeah, it just seems like a lot of positions where they have the numbers, guy drops, no trade is there, and suddenly that advantage disappears. And that's why we've been highlighting it so much. But what a start from Krim it's been. He's already out to 6-1. and one. He accounts for 6 out of their 8 kills. Pretty hot start for sure. As we'll watch Hook try to finesse up towards this bomb site. No work onto the plant yet. BZ's in a great position inside events. Risa gets taken down. Is there going to be a quick trade? It is. BZ's going to play his life now. Looks like they're trying to get a trade onto this. But he plays it. Shotzi, though, with the dead silence comes behind him. Hook gets aggressive through crates. Now you have a two versus four. You can get this bomb down. But Major Maniac going to keep them in this one. I'm not getting planted yet. Major Maniac almost able to catch one, but now his position revealed as he gets aggressive towards the site. Can he catch Hook? He does. He's going to catch Hook, but the bomb is starting to wrap out towards A. Two versus two. Clay and Krim versus Simp and Major Maniac. And a father versus son as we get deep into this round three. As Krim will try to get into a position to put this bomb down. And really, it might come down to whether or not you have dead silence on Simp or Major Maniac to try and make the play. Major's nice not going to have it. Not going to need it as the Simtex will hit. Bomb will not get planted. Clay last alive. No choice but to try and plant. Now, Clay, he had so many clutches yesterday. Can he do it again? Oh, yeah, they hear him. One player's just going to run away. Uh, so he hears Major Maniac running up. He, he's trying to catch him to get the bomb down. Major Maniac, such a smart player. Well, he doesn't even give up the kill. So there we go. Atlanta phase behind Major Maniac finds three kills. A two versus four. All right, Maven, we're just going to have some ridiculous clutches today. We got the two best teams in the world. Let's just let's just let it happen. But how yeah. does that <laughs> unfold? Shotzi, he dies with bomb inside a vent room. They can't get the plan at B. They're probably thinking, you know what? Let's just get control. Let's rotate A. But guess what? Major Maniac goes big. 
Shotzi, though, with some beams. A BZ take it off the map quickly. But it puts us right into a 4v4 as Major Maniac big again. Look at number Priesta nine, got though. Around. Yep, yep, it's a fast flank coming in for Priesta, and he's got Dead Silence just about to run out. Can he get to a position in time? And will he be heard by Hook inside of bathrooms? Not gonna matter. Priest is gonna get the first kill. Now Head's gonna have to turn from Empire. It's a fast trade out. Or was it enough of a mess created by Priesta? Well, I think Hook's gonna get caught. Yeah, Simp just saw him. So into another 2v2. But I, I think he called it where Priesta just sort of... Yeah, he, he made it a bit of a mess, right? They are, they're gonna have to rotate. Let's say Ilian Shotzi. They're gonna try to work the flank here. We're gonna wait to see if the bomb's being rotated. We're gonna play from Vent Room. Selling Simp on the other side. Maybe just trying to catch them. Nice shot. See what a beautiful wow. headshot. On to Selium. Wow. Selium has been so good in that position all year long. Now it's on to Simp. Dude, his first kill on a BZ was absurd too. Just literal beams. Whether it's the MP5 or the M4. But now Simp. Chance to clutch. No Denny to use. Goes soaring out. Here's the first. Goes the challenge. But Empire have got the spots. Back and forth we go. Tied up 2-2. Two, two. And a freebie here for Ilias Simp trying to catch the first. Yeah, Simp might be thinking like maybe the other player is Vent and they're like trying to sandwich him. Uh, you know, if he spots that second guy, maybe he can turn it into something. But just some bad timing. Uh, but Shotzi, really the key difference. Takes down the first Blood King and BZ Wins a one-on-one -on -one versus Selium. And Selium, who you mentioned, has been so, so good. He's 0-4 right now. They need Selium on point if they're going to win this series. Major Maniac is able to get across, take some damage, but going to stay up for now. The Simtexes will come in. Abizi with another first blood. Abizi follows up with two. He's going to challenge for the third. Not a fork, but what a play from Abizi. But as it stands, it's still going to be a two versus two. Selium and Simp versus Clayster and Shotzi. Three of our five MVP finalists left in this round. The bomb now wrapping all the way out towards that. Selium had Deadly Pop, so he's not going to have that. Simp should get it. Shotzi has it. They're rotating towards A. Nobody's really watching this cross. It, now Selium's going to peek it. And this might be great for Sel. Shout out to obser our observing team. They've been just so good all year long. You see this overhead shot. And well, Selium, he's going to win that one. Gives them the man advantage. The headshot goes his way. Bomb gets planted. Shotzi, though, a smoke magician. Not going to be able to do it. Atlanta phase. They clutch another way. It's like these 2v2s that we keep having. Yeah, yeah. They're going to have the round advantage. And that's a big first kill for Selium, right? Like, he's getting blanked until that point. There, he's able to get it done as they let their dead silence build. But, I mean, it's all a BZ, right? I mean, the fact, mm -hmm. the fact that he gets three mid-map, just a ludicrous, ludicrous play to make sure they're in a 2v2 and not some other insane situation. Get yeah, the there's just one. some like like gaps, right? Because Abizi's typically the guy that's watching the flank through them. So Clayster, he finds an opening. He's able to get behind the de defense. Yeah, Abizi doesn't find two or three kills. Dallas may may have a two round advantage or a round advantage. So he plays out of him. That is Abizi's thirteenth first blood in the playoffs, by the way. Most in the playoffs. Envoy and Pristini, the two behind him with ten. So. Yeah, he's been good, but Shotzi is not missing right now. Shotzi wins another big gunfight. He'll be off the map. The BZ gets dropped. Risa, though, gets into this spot. Behind it, silence, but Shotzi able to read it. Finds another kill as Shotzi continues to flow. And that at times has been one of the problems with sort of a... Like, a BZ's timing is with his teammates. Because I think he weakens Shotzi enough where there should be a trade. And basically, you know, he's going to take those fights. It's the way BZ plays. He's going to continue to take those one-on-ones and try to get his team first blood. But I think someone, either a need needs to come in. There has to be a fast trade there so his hard work doesn't go unnoticed. Well, we'll see. The FaZe can get some revenge. Because Empire had so many 2v4s and 3v5s they clutched up yesterday in the map 5. Fade off a 3v5, maybe give Empire a taste of their own medicine. But Hook now hitting the cross, able to spot one, but the reaction too fast for Sim. I don't know how he gets two from that spot, but now a two versus three. 25 seconds remaining on the clock. Selium and Major Maniac trying to clutch up. Selium wins another big on one, one on one. Major Maniac will fall. Now 1v2 for Cell. But Empire, they've got to work this. Diffusing Krim hits the shots, brings us to 3 3.
Oh, it gets a little close there. Dawson hits Simp, showing us why he's one of the best players in the world with some ridiculous shots, a ridiculous reaction onto Illy. But the number's too strong for Dallas. Selium, he gets put into a tough position. He doesn't know where Krim's coming from. He has to worry about the defuse. Krim continues to have a great Who, map number two. Who's the first POV, POV we were on? Because when like, he rounded the corner... Was and that when, was he was Ellie, around, yeah. when, he, when he's around the corner and we saw Hook laying there, like before we hopped off, I'm like, oh, that's a free kill. <laughs> and then Simp just snaps so fast. But not going to matter. Is the round goes to Empire. Nine and four for Krim. Dossi right behind him with seven kills. First blood there to Krim. He's already up to double digits in seven rounds. Krim five in a row finds another. Krim is taking over the most decorated Call of Duty player of all time. Getting it done when it matters most. Yeah, what's sort of the argument is like, well, Karma's got three ring rings. Krim got the most titles. If he wins today, he will also have three rings. No doubt the undisputed GOAT in Call of Duty. Still got some work to do. Bomb being planted. Three versus four. Shots, you know, after getting that bomb down, does get taken out. So 30 seconds, 7.5 to defuse for Atlanta phase. But they have a lot of work to do, and this is an interesting setup. Where, where is Illy right now? Where is Illy? Does he have something on the bomb? Look at this angle from Illy. Well, Hello? he's got the shot as well. Sip gets caught. Why are you giving somebody a haircut as well? But the spot, the angle from Illy. Bring it all out, man. It, it's yeah, the last yeah. series, well, baby. I mean, Bring it, it all out. What? You saw, you saw Hook spot through a window yesterday you saw the beams from clay through a wall on ramaza like yes absolutely joe every single thing every mechanic every way to abuse this and take advantage of any potential situation it is coming out now and you love to see the spots awesome to see from empire as they now go up one but triple positive is krim wall with four what a map for him I will say, I, I, that is one thing I respect for Abizi's game as he is relentless. Goes right back to it, continues to be the guy leading the charge. Priesta, though, gonna have to deal. Well, he thought he was gonna have to deal with Lob from Empire. And they're all gonna rotate back. Now Abizi up top bathroom. His teammates are worried about the flank, but the flank isn't coming through. He's hearing people under him. Here comes the retake. Abizi's hearing so And now he's gonna pounce. Another first blood for him. Train through. Krim almost able to take down one, but the finesse comes in and Simp able to win that. Numbers over to phase. Might not last long, though, with shots he's flying they're forward. On they're on the shots there to get the play. Oh, Simp goes. Oh, wait, no. He they got, got it. They got Krim it. Krim was on it. They Krim got was it. on it the whole time. Oh, you have got to be kidding me as the circus in the madness goes on around the site. It's Empire on the bomb. And they'll get the defuse through. Match point for Empire. What in the hell was going on there, Joe? Uh, yeah, that's what I said, right? You play around the retake. You have the smoke. Krim just hops on it. Says, you know what? Screw this. They're going to have to check it. His teammates cover him. And woo, it was a close one. Now phase. Have to rip off three in a row, or they are in an even tougher spot. Could go down 0-3 in our championship match. Quick plant in from Empire. Now going to be a five-on-five five retake for Faze. First blood to Illy. Abizi's going to get dropped. What a big gunfight when it is, but they're sent through with the trade. It's two start to work the flank. Priest of is going to get caught inside of bathrooms, and Shotzi's going to pop dead silence to get rolling. Celium will fall as well. Down to a 2v3. A Simp and Major Maniac have got to get this retake and round win to keep this map two going. But they are in trouble. So little time to work with. The dead silence starts to come through. Clay takes down one. Simp will fall. And Empire take the surge. 6-3 on a map that FaZe has lost twice this entire year. Empire is rolling. They're just, you know, they're shutting down a BZ a couple of rounds. Shotzi did it. Illy just did it right there. Um, you obviously have that retake scenario, but what? Krim with 13. Shotzi with 11. They're just making the plays. They're making the adjustments. And when you match up so many times, it's what we talk about a lot throughout the year and on broadcast, how difficult it is to continue to beat opponents over and over again on the same maps. Empire making the adjustments. They're making the plays. Well, Joe.
FaZe need to do something. They need to come alive, or, or this is going to be a very, very fast final. Empire are rolling right now, but let's take a look at our U.S. Army tactical play. It's going to be from round seven. Joe, walk me through it. Well, I'm not exactly sure what round seven is, but it, it looks like it's going to be Dallas Empire. Dallas Empire with the bomb down, and this is just setting up Illy all the way in the back, number two. How do, you, how do you defuse this? You hope you have a smoke on the map if you're Atlanta phase, but there's only 15 seconds left at this moment. Simp runs right into his crosshair. Uh, maybe should have hit that one, but it doesn't matter. His teammates <laughs> have his back. And we talked about these first three maps, how pivotal they were. Dallas was hoping to get one. They get two. It's the first two. They're now up 3-0. Yeah, that's what's so insane. Like, the series just gets better and better for Empire as we go. When you just talk about statistics on the year, I mean, I guess, yeah, you can throw them out the window considering the fact that two maps they've now won. They weren't great for them. They weren't beating FaZe on them, but now they are, and that's all that matters. Empire in control. Need two more map victories to close it out. We'll be back after this break. Call of Duty League is brought to you by Metro. Watch the best at their best with unlimited data from Metro. All on T-Mobile's nationwide 5G network. Metro. Everything you need to rule your day. Scuff Gaming. The official controller of the Call of Duty League. The United States Air Force. Learn more at airforce.com. Save money at the restaurants you love with Grubhub Perks. Use code CDLCHAMPS at checkout to get free delivery. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to CDL Game Day presented by Game Fuel. We are two maps down. Down Empire currently sitting at 3-0 here in this championship matchup. And as you can see on screen, a mighty trophy, a massive and empty stadium. Again, social distancing friends, do what you can to stay apart. As we now get into this, we've got a little bit of a match break. We've got our commentators and our players take a short and very quick moment to powder their noses. But myself, Mild Chance, will be giving you a little bit of a chit chat. And of course, we'll be giving you some fun news. And I'm not sure what's going on with the broadcast, mate. There was a bit of a funny moment earlier there. But very, very exciting games happening so far. Again, has not disappointed whatsoever. Chance, welcome, mate. How are you feeling? Looking fantastic in green, by the way. Uh, dude, you look great in blue. I think we are just incredibly looking gentlemen on the day. But either way, I'm feeling great simply because of the gameplay. The first two maps that we saw, 
I think are bringing a storyline together from Dallas Empire that has been being built basically since they brought Rambo Ray on the team. So personally, I'm having a fantastic yeah, it's day. Good call on Rambo Ray. But uh, before we get into the, the nitty gritty of what is uh, has been two very exciting maps so far, it's about time to do the final chance. Grubhub pick of the day for the CDL inaugural season. I went with Mr. First Bloods himself at BZ. I thought he was fantastic. His three piece in round five of that search and destroy was absurd. You went alongside Hook, who made honestly, what, 37, 20? in the hard point on real star I mean again like when I had to make this pick it was one of those things is like I did not forget how good hook is and how great he can be when he's at his best because he's gotten overlooked a, a little bit on this team right we always talk about the veterans on the team and then Shotzi takes a lot of the limelight because he's the MVP he's incredible but hook just beneath the wings one of the best talents we have ever had in Call of Duty it's been that way since he burst onto the scene back in AW he's been incredible and I think the first map that he had he was able to show off his stuff just a little bit. It was bit. beautiful. There's nothing to be slept on whatsoever. And we have slept on Hoot for some time. Uh, Chance, we're going to talk about the grub we've picked up, mate. This was from late last night after a very long and exciting broadcast. And I cannot lie, I was out cold on the couch. My wife picked up the order, brought it in. We had a nice we had a steak with a bit of lobster on the side there. I was going big for champs, but I actually was asleep during this entire experience. I was very, very tired. Okay, was look. No, no, no. I need, no. I need preparation. Look, Miles, I had a rough morning. <laughs> I need to get that out of the way. There was not a lot of prep time. I wasn't prepared for this in the slightest. So that's what my breakfast looks like, man. That's a, a normal-ish day. The smoothie was delicious at the very least, but like, oh, dude, it's such a bad I'm, picture, especially in comparison. Man, I just, it's so bad. You did great, though, I, man. I, you're, you're carrying I me can't right now. believe I had steak and lobster for dinner, and you had like a wrap <laughs> and what maybe was chocolate milk for breakfast. Chance has been an absolute treat. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the Grubhub picks all done and dusted. Don't forget about Grubhub. Do what you can to help out local businesses in your area again from the times of five until nine in your time zone the perk section of the app do it just go there now you know the drill it's the end of the season well, anyway we're going to throw over to maven and merc now as they get into the next few maps again domination coming up after this one uh maven are you there sir and we are back thank you gentlemen oh, i'll tell you what joe looking at those two um miles looks like he is like british royalty chance looks yes. like he went to like a, a dating class and someone dressed mm -hmm. him up for like his first ever date. That's his first date. It looks yeah, adorable. I think you adorable. can tell the difference between the two in, in, in their food pictures. You had <laughs> a, a lobster and steak on one side with I, 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 a, maybe a breakfast burrito and beef from Chance. I don't know, but yeah, you, you sure. can tell the difference between those two for sure. Well, Love Empire. Them both, though. <laughs> yeah, me too. Empire is up massively um and you know we've seen we've seen some crazy comebacks like what mm -hmm. i i mean you've held I, I hate to bring this up right now but you've been a That's part hard. of a, a series where you were up 3-0 and a team came back and won what four in a row right so like yep. it is possible we've seen crazy stuff happen i think at aw it happened a couple times as well but in a final <laughs> uh yeah it's it's gonna be tough i i think what we j we got sent stats after the first two maps and, and some things that just stand out to me uh cell and priest are both at a 0.74 uh you have major maniac and abizi at a 0.85 uh so we talked about this series especially on the pre-show where the phase has dominated this lane it's it's been the clutch plays and the team are from dallas that you know have kept them in this but it's the opposite right now uh and, and it's tough for atlanta phase if they are not all playing well if they're not all slaying I don't know how they win this one. So they have to step it up in the killing category. Well, this is one that they were able to win yesterday. And uh, it, it's been a, it's been a great map for them. It's been a mode that they've dominated against Empire. But every time we've said something like that, it hasn't mattered in the slightest. But I think without question, we are into must win territory. Like you've got to win this map in your face. You absolutely have, everything has to be on the line. Everything's got to turn around. And there's four kills in a row for phase. They start to get going. I remember when we watched this yesterday, there was like Selium had multiple like team wipes on Dallas that really changed the game for them. Uh, I was pretty back and forth. It was like an eight point win, but Atlanta Bays are able to pull it through with their second half comeback. We'll see who is that priest that trying to make the play. I think he takes down two. So he's going to stop the B cap for now. You see the blue arrows starting to get pushed up. The smoke is down. It's going to be a one on one and a BZ says hello with his knife. So they're going to keep control of B and that is a big moment. Now they can try to regain control of maps of the map. And you see the spawns. Uh, Hook spawns out. And look at the pressure at C. Atlanta phase, they are flying. Well, they're flying forward. And off 
I, Joe, I think we need to hear the comps because FaZe are in trouble. I want to hear what it sounds like. Are they regaining and ready to do battle? Let's go to an Astro Listen in with Atlanta FaZe. I'm going top pass. I'm going top pass. I'm going right, 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 to help you clear it out. You're trying to get shit. Okay. Nice. 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 Krim was top diner. Top diner. I keep him on B, Mike. Yeah. Top has weak. Clay? Top has Clay, guys. He's going to the right side. Right side. Nice. Has Clay. Has Clay. Elite's on line. Yeah, maybe. Maybe if he can. Top has Top has Clay. Someone go back. Someone go back. One C Clay. I'm weak. I'm weak. Nice. One with Trax. I'm B dead. Nice. Three. Nice. Three. 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 He's out, bottom diner, bottom diner. One shot, diner. Nice. Nice. I have water, I have water. Get top, get top, get top. Oh. Camp. Get top. Oh, me water, man. Yo, yo, you know what's top of camp. Yeah, yeah, top of camp. I got one. Under your stairs. Under your stairs. They pushed out water, I think, guys. Yeah, they're gonna be C. They're gonna be C. They're gonna be C. Clay water, Clay water. I'm needing line. There's two bottom diner, I think. Do it, do it, and he'll water fast. There's bottom diner. Back up. I'm diner, I'm diner. 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 Have right now, have that's right one day, hold, 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 yeah, yeah, hold, hold, hold. Guys, hold. No, he's water, MC, he's water. He's, 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 he's not even looking at you. He's on the back right, he's going on the van, I think. Tracks, tracks, Illy. Yeah, the tracks in close court, they're trying to put us in the trap. Make sure we get A. Yeah, there's the other two. Still, let me see Clay. I spawned there, I'm A, I'm A, Cap A, Cap A, you should be good. I got it, I got it. They're going C from tracks. Yo, what'd you take away from that, considering the spot phase are in right now? Hey, they seem calm, they're playing their game, but Tellium just went big at C. Takes down two players. Uh, you, you know, they, they started on bad side. You'll take this 18-point lead. You would love to yeah. have around 15 points going into the half, but you have the side street, but they're going to recognize that, and now it's a fight back for that B flat. Yeah, they've been uppercutted and just laid out to start this series. And they get back up and fight back in this matchup because Empire have been so, so damn good. But it sort of feels like we know like one big play, one big map win can be the difference. We know how momentum COD Esports can be. Mm -hmm. FaZe needs some momentum. That's not all they need, but they need some momentum. And they need big plays at big time moments. And feels like they're starting to get that maybe a little bit, right? Some of the players I was talking about in, in Celium and free stuff. Oof just trying to play his life. That B flight almost captured or Dallas Empire. It's about, you know, two thirds of the way there, but a BZ. Gonna take one. He's just trying to sneak his way through towards C. He tapped it. I don't know if Dallas recognized it, but this could be a big 40 seconds. You could get a three cap here if Atlanta Fay is able to execute this. There's the neutral. And now here comes everybody. Can he finish this before they get to him? The trophy's gonna keep him up. The lethals and tacticals not gonna phase him. His priest able to dip back into hazmat. But it's Krim with dead silence all the way around. That should be a freebie for Priesta. And he's able to stay no. alive. Finally going to get caught. Almost able to turn and burn onto another. But over to Clay's POV mid map. Clay picks up three. The Simtex hits. The M4 hits. And finally he drops. But that play enough to get some pressure on to B and alleviate the pressure from the home cap at C. The final seconds will tick off. And I believe the advantage. Okay, so you talked about that 18 point advantage. That'll stick through until the final seconds. And yeah, starting on the poor side. You feel good about FaZe's chances, but never count out Empire. No, and, and we've seen some three caps. We've seen some two in a neutrals. We know that 18-point lead can go away very quickly, especially if Dallas Empire are able to get that flip towards C and get them spawning and, and trap them bottom side of the minimap. But it's going to be tough to do. Atlanta FaZe, they know they can play around this lead. They don't have to be the team to try to force things on B. You play for positions. You play around the kills. When you think it's time to get on the B flag, you do it. Well, it's phase up. In. It's phase up 18, but it's Empire dominating the series. We're just kicking off the second half of the Dom. Let's go to an Astro Listen with Dallas Empire. Yellow. I'll be easy. I'll be easy. One shot. Yellow. One shot. Major. Wait, Wait, water water street, 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 Two, don't block, don't block, don't block. Yo, we spawned out deep. One guy yeah, might be pushed up. Yo, one guy's mid-tracks mid-tracks. Yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm big yeah, guys. Yo, we spawned P1. Spawned P1. Yo, if you push your deflip to A, one guy's at one. Yo, yo, mid-tracks, square, square, square. Go, 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 go. Mid-tracks, mind you guys. Watch my mid-tracks, please. I can't see him. He's mid-tracks. 
Mid track, one track, mid track, one track. Mid track dead. Nice. I'm about to smoke yeah, up. Go see, go see, go see. Go see. They're gonna be probably. You're gonna spawn in. One dead, definitely down there. Yeah, yeah. You're, we're missing one. Wait for him, Is it in your way? Oh, BZ. On it, on it. You can get, you can get to B, get to B. J dead. That was only a cabin. They went. They're spawning again. Hold down your simp. Hold this and we win, guys. Hop down your simp. They're gonna be mid tracked over and over. We got the flip. We got the flip. They're on B. They're on B. Top blue, top blue. Blue on top I'm nade. Top blue. Watch mid tracks a bunch, yo. We got water. I'm depleting this. Yo, he's on B. I got naded. Yo, mid tracked. Absolute mid tracks. Top left diner. Top left diner. Top left diner. I'm gonna flash it for you. Hold this shit. I got the flash it. Nice. I'm gonna hold red. I'm gonna hold square. I'm getting in blue. I'm getting in blue. No, no. One guy. They know I'm blue. Yeah. Back diner. Back diner. I'm gonna top barrels. Top barrels. Nice. I'm gonna top diner. Are you good? Yo, I have P1. I have P1. I'm not going top. I'm not going top. Who's blue tree? Yo, top blue. Top blue. Top blue. Bobby Pro. I'm going top diner. Sound on. Sound on. Hold this whole time, guys. Let's go. Yep. Every every bomb. Top blue weak, Prisa. Every bomb that. Well, it didn't take long. The flip comes in early from Empire. Joe, you heard Clay. Like, we just gotta hold this. We got the flip. We got what we want. Yeah, hold this and we win it. Uh, I believe that was his words. But a phase, very experienced domination team. They take down the player who was watching. See, that was Krim. You're gonna have a rotator in Illy. And he made the play. We saw a BZ in this position. It's a BZ who gets them out of that. You're gonna have Clay who has another shot. But you talked about the flip. And guess what? It's just difficult to hold this team for this long. Uh, Atlanta phase, they're gonna be able to get out. But you cut it down to eight. Now, can they hold on to eight B? It looks like Priest is all the way back A. They're trying to get a neutral at the B flag. They're getting all the kills. There's a few players left. Clay is going large right now, trying to play his life. Priest is on A. They're just going to play around these neutrals. I don't blame them. Well, both are neutral. Only active cap is going to be C. Simp comes through with two. The lead has been shipped away to six. And you see middle of your screen, Shotzi on five in a row. But they've got Major them spawning at bottom. That's what you'd love. Yeah. Yeah, can Major Maniac go big? And they're trying to st find Shotzi. He has played his life so well. Dallas Empire, they want to get to see. There's a couple of players back here. Just taking time to do so. And the players spawning up towards A. They're going to go towards that B flag from Atlanta phase. Major Maniac trying to do what he can. He will get taken down. So it is just flips back and forth. A 13-point lead. Minute 45 remaining. Yeah, that, <laughs> you had the favor side won and lost like three times in the span of three minutes. It's been absurdity, but Sip will pick Illy off the bar. Not going to work the neutral for now. Still wants to be got up and fight. The trade comes in and Hoop will fall. Empire down 11. But with the two cap, they can bring it back. That's all they need is the two cap. Shotzi clearing off that bit of progress on the neutral from FaZe. Mid-map once again locked down by Empire. His FaZe starting to get stacked up inside a restaurant. It's Shotzi on the flank again, trying to get it done. Nearly able to connect with the knife, but a BC able to put him down from the top window. It's Krim doing damage, just trying to be the guardian angel, the watchdog over that B site. You can tell what, what Atlanta Face is trying to do. They just want to neutral this. They, they're just trying to neutral it and keep their lead. Uh, and Clay and Krim are not letting that happen. All the kills right now are Dallas Empire. Krim on a five spree. Uh, so here we go. The cut down to two points. They're dealing with the neutral. The pressure all on Atlanta phase. You still have some pressure here from Hook inside of blue. Only a couple of pushes remain. We're going to have a tied game in Dallas Empire. They have hold on to see. They have held on. What a hold it has been. What a flip it was just a minute ago. Now all the pressure. If there wasn't enough, already on phase. It is here again. Priest able to take down two. And they've got to get on the point. They're flying towards B. They're flying towards C. Over towards A will be Hoop. He's going to go ahead and get the neutral. How quickly can you make the play if they're phase? You're just not it. enough time. There's not enough time. Empire, look to pull a rabbit out of the hat again and take a massive edge in this series. Empire going up 4-0 with yet another clutch. Now just one map away from being champions. There was a few pushes where Atlanta FaZe had numbers on the B flag and there was no smoke down. There was no trophy down. They didn't get position. I think they overextended themselves a little bit. They couldn't get the neutral off. Dallas held on. It was, it, it was just a game of the clock and Dallas played around it. I love the, the heads up play from Hoop to just go all the way around towards A. He knew exactly what he was trying to do. How many times, Clint, has Dallas beaten Atlanta FaZe all year on domination? once this is just their second time it was seven yeah, one to atlanta phase but just doesn't matter right
yeah, that's the case for Azir Cave. That's the case for Gunrunner yeah. Search. That's the case for Domination in general. Like, nothing statistically is making sense here. If you look through the numbers, I think anyone logically would have thought this was going to be a long series. Anyone would have thought that would have been the case. It is not the case right now. Empire blowing the wheels off of this one. If you think that Gunrunner Search, maybe the dagger was put into the back a bit while it was just driven home with a bat based on how that last round goes. Up 4-0. One map to win. I, I did not expect this. Like, I, I, no. I, 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 I thought did. without question Empire could win this. Of course. Like, yep. absolutely with the way they've been playing. They've been, they've been so, so good. But to do it in this fashion and be up 4-0... What's going on? Why? Well, What's I mean, going on? We, we've talked about just how close the games have been as we take a look at the, the last minute of that domination. Uh, and these are some of the plays I'll be talking about, right? Look at the red arrows. They're, they're trying to get position a restaurant. Three go down. Three go down. There was a, another opportunity before this where they're just not executing at the big moments. Uh, Dallas are. They're playing with map position. They're playing with their head. Mook, you know, he not only does he make this play, he also, you know, neutrals A. When you have all the pressure at sea, they're, they're calm, they're cool, they're collected. Uh, in a lot of those close respawns that we've seen between these two teams, we talked about it being a player or two away from Dallas taking it, and you're seeing that now. Yeah, it just feels like, I, I mean, we've said this all year, like Empire, or not Empire, sorry, phase at times have gotten by what feels like on talent alone. Like, they haven't always played the game the correct way. It's not always been clean. They've just been so uber talented that they've got through. But now you're running into a team that is a finely tuned machine like even if you still give the talent edge to phase which i don't even know if be the case with the way that empire's playing right now empire's yeah. just empire's just better at the game like I, I think that's completely and utterly evident right now with how these matches are going they are better at the game at this stage of the year and they are showing it they just have a different look at how they're playing these maps uh it's different than what we've seen all year uh, maybe not necessarily in that domination but uh, you know you look at his year cave multiple times the way they're playing it. I don't know. They're just, they're learning from their mistakes. They're, they're learning on how they want to do it, how they want to execute it. And they're playing it perfectly. There's, there's really nothing else to say besides that. Yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. But let's take a look at our PS4 damage dealt leaderboard from the map one. And I expected it to be Hoop, considering he dropped up nearly 40 kills, but it's Shotzi. We're just three more damage, but that dynamic duo, look at them putting in the numbers. Krim not far behind, but Kind of look at who is putting in the firepower throughout that first hard point. Well, yeah, you had, you know, Krim right there. Uh, you also had Krim in the search and destroy. You have Krim in the domination who goes 23 and 14. He didn't have, he had a really solid map one yesterday. Uh, but the back half of that, uh, even though they won this series versus phase, I don't think he, he tweeted about it. He felt like he didn't play well. Uh, maps four and five. This time he is, he's bringing it. Yeah, and I want to talk a little bit about our, our I mean, I know he's not on that damage dealt leaderboard, but our game field featured player in Clayster, you know, I just loved him to listen in. Like, the simple little comments, like, we flip, we hold this, we win. Like, we have what mm -hmm. we want. Just reminding your team you're not in trouble, you're in a good spot, and yeah, it's easier to do when you've got a three-map edge in that particular scenario, but we've seen him do it all year in different spots, in different positions against different teams. Step up and just be a vocal leader we need to be in game. And we don't know exactly what the dynamic is like outside of game and the relationship with the coach and how everything plays out. But in game, there's no question when there needs to be a word of encouragement, a word of gas, or just a bit of help in a desperate situation, Clay seems to be that guy. That's what I was talking about. Uh, I think he's had, he hasn't had like the craziest performance this series, but he's the reason they're in this situation, why they came from the winner's side. And I just feel like when you listen to him, yeah, you, you nail it. He slows the game down for his teammates. He makes the game feel like practice, and that's what you need to do. What you do every single day, multiple times a day, what you have worked on, sometimes can go out, out, out the window. It, it really can because the nerves get to you. The pressure yeah. gets to you. But Clay just allows it to be, hey, this is just another map. It's another game. We've played this thousands of times. It reminded me of like the formal call to listen in yesterday where it's like frantic comms and then formal just like, listen, we're going to get C, we're going to push through B, do it. Like just, just like a clear, concise, like everyone shut up, this is what we're going to do. And uh, yeah, you need that at times. So here we go. This could be the final map of the CDL championship match unless FaZe can muster up something insane, which would be the wildest reverse sweep I think we've ever seen in the history of Call of Duty if they can do it. But our empire simply too strong right now. It's hard point on Gunrunner. And this has been a map that 
Dallas has owned. They are 4-1 and one versus Atlanta. Probably their, one of their better hard points. Uh, they're 14-10 and 10 overall. It's not a bad one uh, for Atlanta at 11-10. and 10. They have a lot of repetitions, but we've also seen some uh, key mistakes on their end. But as I said, you're feeling good if you're Dallas because this is where you wanted to get. Uh, and hopefully you had a map advantage. And, and now they have that, right? They yeah. won the, the first three maps where Atlanta Faze had every single statistical advantage. I was thinking we'd get here 2-2. Two, two. That, that, was, that was my thought looking through it. Like we'd be 2-2 two, two heading into this map. Uh, it's not that. It's not even close to that. This has just been dominance. Dominance, dominance from Empire. And we'll see if they can continue to play in that fashion as we watch our game fuel featured player in Clayster and see what he is able to do. Just trying to make sure he wraps back. Lock spawns down for his team as we get ready to head over to Depot. I'm just trying to make sure nobody pushes through. It's that flip. Is you know, Atlanta Phase, they earn some time. Second hill is going to pop. Here comes the first push. For him, though, he's going to shut it down quickly. But with these close squad spawns, you see pressure time and time again. But Krim lights up the feed. He finds a third. That's going to be a triple. But there's three dead. Three will drop. What is Dilly going to be able to do inside? He's got a little bit of help, but everyone keeps falling. Phase. They've been a break team all year. Might be another one here. As Sempt and Selly have increased up and made sure everybody just floods on through, pushes on, and spawning out is Empire. And there's the break with 30 seconds left. A chance for Phase to smoke up some time. Is Celium on three in a row? Made as much time as they can. Is that number five? That's gonna be Shotzi right away. He's gonna head for that rotation. Some of his teammates are gonna maybe just try to contest this a little bit, force the rest of Phase to, to wrap back so they can get it set up for Minecart, and that, that's gonna be great for Dallas Empire. Phase will have a, a small lead here. A lot of the pressure gonna come through that vent room. Sim's gonna get taken down. And here we go. Talked about their them being a bright team. Can they do it again? Krim in a great spot. Well, Billy's slowing down the push instantly. See how long they can hold. Working all the way around the back is going to be number six in Major Maniac. We'll keep an eye on that because he actually spawns up a VZ with him. So there's a big pinch opportunity here from FaZe to try and get in. The collapse is in. The spawn out there for Empire. And it looks like FaZe have broken again. Yeah, Simp and Selium, I think, take down four. You get the spawns if you're Major Maniac. You have another pinch coming in. A VZ's going to take down one, but that'll stagger the push. Just a little bit. Some Dallas Empire members are going to fight for this position. When we rotate over to crates, you would love to hold mine cards. Because Atlanta Faces is going to be spawned on that side of the map. You can you deal with them off spawn. Earn some time there at crates. Billy's started to head over towards that way. Atlanta Faces. Yeah, they get two breaks in a row. They have a 30-point lead. Yeah, now a really good chance if you can contest some of this upcoming time and hold on for Warehouse to build this out to a significant lead. Maybe get rolling in this series. But now let's see what they can do. The minecart pressure, they're still for Empire. They're going to be able to get some shots in on the cross as Krim is going to be the guy there. But it's our game field feature player we're on board with in Clayster who's trying to lock this down with Shotzi. It's sent the lockdown to Major Maniac. Well, he's going to drop two as well. Priesta trying to shoot somebody, but most of his bullets is going into the dirt. Major Maniac, though, watching over him. Headed to Warehouse next. This will be on the left side of your mini-map, so Atlanta Faze are going to have the spawns. Shotzi's trying to work his way through the middle of the map. The rest of his teammates going to work on this time. You're just trying to control this position if you're Atlanta Faze. Just stagger the push forward. They're going to do that. So 10 seconds left. Maybe you earn some of this time. Then you see the nades coming in. And he's just going to back on up, but his teammates are set up. And this is one of the things that Atlanta Faze has to be better on is a hold like this. Yeah, but there are two, bit pl two players left that could have gotten some pressure mid. Both are going to fall, so there's an opening there, and it's Shotzi with the opening. Cracks it wide open. That's three in a row for Shotzi on the push. Make it four. Shotzi dismantling the phase roster, and what a big break this could be. And the spot in the corner as well. It's a wild killing spree in for Shotzi. The finesse up top to the boxes as Shotzi is just lights out. Look how quickly Empire break in. Yeah, that, yeah, those individual plays, man. That's why he's our regular season MVP. He's gonna tie this game up. Shotzi on one side, though. Simp on the other. Simp not going down without a fight. Up to 15 and 10 on a three spree. As well as we focus on spawns for Nash. You do have Major Maniac set up at crates already. Look at the score. Rest like, what, the phase, yeah. 
what could have been like a 50 point lead for FaZe, you're looking at a tie game. Like what a play mm -hmm. from Shotzi and Empire to break in. And that's now, that's a prime example of what we've been talking about. FaZe has had some really good breaks, but there when they need the hole, not so great. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's what you said, right? The two players dying in the middle of the map, right? What are those two players trying to do? Just stagger the push for Dallas Empire. That doesn't happen. And Shotzi just turns into a monster. Yep. Uh, he... <laughs> a monster's a good way to describe it. Not anyone you want to face off against. But now, as we're halfway through our first point, this second part of rotations, FaZe will continue to try and lock down that right side of the map. But Shotzi with dead silence can play spoiler again. Could play spoiler again. Takes down one, just continues to finesse around, see if he can influence these spawns. It's not gonna happen yet, as minecart spawn is still in for empires. They've got a track across the map. Shotzi is just trying to do what he can to keep them just away from the flow, point. Dude. He's yeah. just got a flow to his movement, man. It is beautiful to watch. Finally, a BZ shuts him down. But I like that. He, he knows he's alone on that side of the map. You know, takes his time. His teammates are, you know, are in some of the hill time. Give them a 10 point lead. And here comes the first push for Dallas Empire here at Depot. We've talked a lot about that, you know, kind of early year switch with him from the trophy over to Dead Silence. I think you saw there, like him with Dead Silence, just he's having fun. <laughs> just cruising yeah. around the map, picking up kill after kill. The phase have got an entry point into the hard point. Empire here though too. Hook's gonna pick up two. Four are going to drop. The parallel spawns in for both teams, but Empire seem to have the edge inside. Four players stacked up inside of the hard, hard point. The crossfire is on. Clay's POV to see if he can hit some in four shots. Not gonna need to do it as Illy picks it up, but now it's Clay's turn to make sure Simp can't get in, and he's just spotting and calling out as the youngsters are putting him down. A game fuel feature player just taking his time. Gonna have about a 40 point lead there. And while they didn't have spawns, it's a great break through the front. Now Atlanta phase, they're gonna have this hole. And we saw this a couple of times yesterday where this th was actually a really good hold for them at minecart. It kept them in the game. They could do that here. They play it from a very tight setup. But Illy, he's gonna open things up with a double that allows play to get in. Can he win the one on one? No, sell. Responds with a double of his own. But hey, that opens things up for his teammates. Yeah, it's at least made it. Messy. Yeah, messy inside of the hard point. Sim trying to clean up that mess with a mop, doing his best job to get that done. Lethal's all over the place. It's both sides dropping to Sim Texas. Sim just trying to finesse around this trophy and accrue this time. Now down, what, 15 points with 20 or so left to go. We could have a lead change in the win as FaZe can take over with the rest of this time. A BZ trying to do it inside of the... Spawn boxes for Empire. Delays the push for a moment, but Empire do get on through. We'll get the final couple of seconds here, but FaZe have set up for next outside in crates. Yeah, some decent time for FaZe. Cuts that, you know, 40 point lead down to 20. Now they have an opportunity where Dallas is going to be playing maybe a little bit conservative. Try to work for spawns, hold spawns for warehouse. Uh, it's 12, four going to go down. Five are going to go down. The aggression from Atlanta FaZe. They're going to try and push past mid map. But well, that's going to be a clean 15 seconds. Priest here just hanging out. Now, can you push it and flip it, right? Can you get this next wave and get the flip? I think it's going to be Stellium that has to go huge, but he is going to ultimately get dropped by Shotzi towards Minecart. So, great amount of time you picked up here with your phase, but Empire still comfortable with the spawns in the back. A little nice movement from Shotzi there with a bit of bunny hop in to take someone out of the hard point, even if it's just for a moment. Then Illy with a bit of movement of his own. A nice double kill for him. Yeah, Illy's obviously one of the players we don't talk about very often. Plays a very selfless role, similar to a BZ, and he can just go off at any moment, just like we saw there. The that didn't look selfish. That looked, that looked nasty. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's what I'm saying. He, he's got it. He is, he is a, a talented player. But now, Atlanta face, can they get this break? You have Krim, who's just sort of dealing with players middle of the map, trying to stagger the push. This is going to be a wide push, trying to hit from both sides if you're Atlanta face. And there's the difference. Like, at least Empire get two kills in this first wave. Like, they has got none. And mm -hmm. Shotzi just pushed on through. Now you're into a better position, but FaZe have got to get in, and they've got to get in quickly. Empire at the 199 point, up four. Playster, Hoop, Illy trying to hold on inside, but bit by bit, the players are dropping, and Hoop's going to be the last guy inside of the point. It seems FaZe has gotten the break in. So what Empire was able to do, FaZe do, maybe not as cleanly, not as quickly, but they do break on through at a critical position in this game. And this will get them right over the 220 mark at approximately 
30 away from victory as a BZ locks down a triple. And this is sort of the way this series has, has been. Uh, it's still a very close game, but you look at the stats side. Atlanta, they are outslaying. Just plain and simple. Uh, and that's the way they have been winning the matchup versus the Dallas Empire. But this is one of those crucial moments. Who is going to clutch up when it matters most? Three going to go down on the hill. Atlanta phase. They're going to flip spawns for depot. They're going to try to earn some time. Second by second, they might get on the board. Yeah, they might get a map win. Can they extend this series? Or does Empire have one more massive clutch in the bag? Can they somehow do it again? The clutch narrative has been everything for Empire in the deep moments of the game. But it seems like a BC doesn't want to go without a fight. 37 and 23 plus 14 from him three in a row again over the final minute just so many kills for a bz and phase is 18 points to get it done and 10 seconds away from our next hard point popping and that's where they can close it out empire somehow gonna get another big break or need another big break they did it once at warehouse can they do it here at depot yeah they, they had a big break here can, can atlanta phase just hold and they get, get a, a solid hold in. Ooh, it looks like Hooch just stopped shooting right there. Major Maniac, he's going to take down two. Selium towards the front. Have the Slayers on the Atlanta phase side finally woken up. It looks like they have already the, the kill 40. feed. There's already the, the kill feed. There's the 40 bomb as well. We're getting burritos, Maven. Abizi puts up 40. They outslay by somewhere around 20 kills, and they get the map victory. So let's, let's think about it. How stupid this is so far. Every map that has been favored lopsidedly by the other team, the, the, the person that's favored so much has lost it. Every single map now. What's going on? What was the edge here for Empire? Uh, it was 4-1, I think. Uh, I don't get it, two? Joe. I throw all the stats out the window. I don't want a single other stat this whole match. Yeah, throw them out. Uh, and finally, you see Cell smiling. Maybe you get some positive vibes going. It's... If they're going to claw their way back into the one, it's one map at a time. It's going to be a long series. It's what we're hoping for. This is what we wanted. We'll see if they can do it. And I think if you're, I think if you're Empire, like you're not, you're not nervous yet. You're up 4-1, but there's got to be a sense of, we could have closed it out there. We could have blanked them. But here, the burrito codes are in. Get your burritos now. Go fast. They go so quickly. So fast, Joe. People love burritos. Oh, we love burritos. Hopefully, win, win, we win multiple burritos. All of the burritos. Oh, I'm ordering one tonight after this match is done. Uh, without you question. You a burrito? 100%. I'm eating a burrito for dinner. I had tacos it's, yesterday, but I might have Kat, to eat a burrito. Kat, uh, my fiance, is going with some friends and taking copper to like an Airbnb. The, the pool is yeah. so hot here in Texas. Like Three of her girlfriends are going to go there and bring their dogs. That means mm -hmm. I've got the house to myself tonight. That means only two things will be happening. I'll be playing Call mm -hmm. of Duty, and I'll be covering myself in burritos. Well, at least it's not fake authentic maple syrup or fake whatever that stuff was, because that that was gross. So was I smelled. It's for an so easier long. cleanup. Yeah. I smelled for so long, and the Herman Miller was stinky. <laughs> Just stinky. Yeah. But phase, they get it done. They get one map and stay alive. They're in a massive hole though, still. And Joe, I know I've asked you this a lot of times over the year, but what do you what do you do? Like, how how do you get back on point? Now you got one map open on the board. How do you find more? It sounds just like I, we say it over and over again, but it, it really is just map by map. You, you can't let this score linger in your head. You have to focus on the game. And, and as soon as maybe you combo two maps in a row, if they take this game five, maybe then that's when the nerves and that pressure start to hit the Empire side and the belief comes out. You win two maps in a row and you're like, hey, we can do this. Why not? Let, let's do it. We have the talent to do so, but they're going to have to play some perfect Call of Duty. Yeah, at this point, it's like, your face, yeah, you got man. nothing to lose. You're down in a big hole. Why not have the biggest comeback in the history of it? We'll see if Empire can close it out. We'll be back after this break. Major Maniac with the play. What a play from Sip. Cillian goes huge. A BZ! Lightning strikes twice! What an individual play from Priest of...
Call of Duty League is brought to you by Metro. Watch the best at their best with unlimited data from Metro. All on T-Mobile's nationwide 5G network. Metro. Everything you need to rule your day. Thank you to Xperia by Sony, official mobile partner of the Call of Duty League. The new Xperia 1 Mark II smartphone brings you the ultimate mobile gaming experience. With a cinema-wide 4K OLED display and more technology to enhance your gameplay. Tournament audio and team chat listenings are brought to you by Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the Call of Duty League. Join the Astro family and order the CDL A4 TTR headset and pro team speaker tags today at astrogaming.com. Mountain Dew Game Fuel, the official energy drink of the Call of Duty League. back it is cdl game day presented by game fuels championship weekend is coming to a close and i think for a lot of people it was a bit of a worry there then it may have been finishing a little too soon these three faces on your screen will be giving you a little bit of a reprieve from all the action my name is miles ross joining me in the middle there study jeremy welcome to the show and of course chance on the end jay mate you're looking fantastic welcome mate how you feeling I'm feeling good, man, but this series has got me sweating. I just saw Dallas go up 4-0 so fast. One map away from closing it out. And FaZe decided to finally come alive, outslay their opponent. You see a BZ with 40 kills. It, it, it looks like they're lacking in that leadership role because you see Clayston on the opposite, opposite side just getting so hyped for this team. And Atlanta just need that spark. And hopefully after that hard point, they should be open in this series. I mean, Charles, again, it was it was close to finish. We, of course, got burritos, but Dallas are pulling out all the dirty stops here, mate, trying to get the win done. All of them. Like, the first few maps, they had a bunch of weird things <laughs> as they were pulling out. Never before seen, but that was the story of the first half. They had us there, but now FaZe, of course, working on that comeback, but a very difficult road very ahead. Very difficult road ahead. is far from over, hopefully, but I have just received word that we're ready to rock and roll and get the game underway. Maven, my friend, take it away, you big, bold, beautiful... <laughs> Thank you so much, Miles. We are back and phase maybe maybe some life. Maybe some life. I, I I'm not a believer yet. I know I predicted them to somehow pull this out and get the win, but now it seems impossible. It seems improbable. But if anyone could do it, maybe it's phase. And like you sort of were talking about it towards the end of that, like before the break. Like, you got nothing to lose now. Like you're in this big hole. Oh, play game, right? It has some fun. I don't know. <laughs> Why not just... It, it, you think it's in their heads, maybe, like, we have a chance to do something no one's ever done and have one of the craziest, if not the craziest, reverse sweep in the history of Call of Duty? Uh, that'll get started if they win a couple of maps. I think after one win, I don't I don't think that's really the conversation. But, you know, if they, you know, bring this 4-3, 4-2, yeah, they, they might start having that conversation for sure. And, man, I'll tell you, but Krim didn't have the best map there, but he has been so good. Through the first three, he had like a 1.34, and you got to think, I know he's thinking about it a bit. He has a chance to cement himself as the undisputed greatest player of all time. There will be no conversation. There will be no debate. There will be no one else in the conversation. He has a chance to do it here. We'll see what Krim can do over the rest of this series. But for me, just as a commentator, and I don't care who wins, I want the best team to take this, but... I guess I want to see if FaZe can make the run. Like, can they make this interesting? Can they give us a wild marathon -like series? They've got to keep it going. And now we head to search on Ramaza, and this is where FaZe looked out of sorts at times. But Nameless kind of talked about it leading into this, Joe. They did some of the hard parts, right? Like, they put themselves in good position. They dominated the first Bloods. They had 4v2s. They had 5v2s. They, they got in good spots. They just couldn't win it from there. And, well, we highlighted Krim. There's the first Blood to start it off. And he might hit a second one of these. He's going to try and play his life up top. Uh, who is that? Selling him. He's going to have some players to deal with. And Abize bring them back into this one. Shachi with some quick rotations up through. Sell. He's going to back down. Try to play his life. Obviously, we're, we're in the round one. So you don't have dead silence. Everyone's here and everyone. But it is a skirmish. And hello, Priest dying behind you. Nice movement from Shachi. Dallas, they have B control. Now, can they get the bomb down in this two versus four? Yeah, I mean, can they do what FaZe couldn't yesterday? They, cl they close out these rounds when they have the massive man advantage. Shotzi is in trouble on that site, but he's able to stay up for now. Who's going to be able to help him? It's going to be Krim. Krim gets the first two in the round. He gets three. He gets four. Krim, six, takes over round one in Empire. Strike first.
Yeah, they open things up with that first blood. They execute onto the site. Shotzi does a great job, but... You know, I, I think, what, Teep was talking about it, too. The, the last time he was on a Champ Sunday, Krim did not play well. He did not play well last year. He wants to redeem himself. He wants another ring. And his search and destroys today against Atlanta Face have been fantastic. What, he had 13 on that gun runner. It starts this one off with four. It is a huge, huge first round. So now what can FaZe do to answer the call? It does not start off smoothly for them at all, but it's an aggressive hit over towards B. Hopefully they can get through Someone the doors this time around. <laughs> Shot, Shotzi think? got Shotzi. that silence. Yep. Yep. Major Maniac turns, but it's not going to happen in time. So now you're worried about getting pinched on both sides. They aren't able to work the plant. They're going to move into the B house as things have unraveled, but Shotzi still has that dead silence up. We'll see if he can find the angle. He's able to do it. It was Krim in the first round. It's Shotzi in round two being the playmaker. Yeah, I think Stell just gets some really, really bad timing there. He was watching that alleyway for like five to ten seconds. Priesta and Simp, though. Sorry, Priest and Abizi. And then two versus three. They have some time to work with. They want to rotate it. they can, but it looks like Illy's up top cafe or bottom cafe. So he's going to be watching that. He's going to watch the rotation. And I think Priest is thinking about it. How do they want to play this? It's going to take some individual plays. That is for sure. He still goes up. And yeah, he doesn't have Teddy. He has a, a trophy. So that's going to be bombed down. And there we go. Two quick rounds for Dallas. Yeah, and the, the early kills, everything. Prim, and then it's Shotzi. They just get the massive numbers advantage. And well, you feel good in those spots if you're Empire because it didn't matter if you had the numbers yesterday. You still pulled out rounds. They're showing they can do it on both sides. Disadvantage, advantage, doesn't matter. They're taking the round wins and just four rounds away now from a championship. See what adjustments Atlanta will make. It's just, yeah, those, those early deaths that are shutting them down. Dallas, they're going right back towards B. See if Krim can find the opening again. Hook has already surged on through. They're flying in behind the smoke. Selian backs up from the top window for now. Empire yeah, want to look a great position. This point down. It's a great position. Selium again just has no idea. He's going to get pinched here. He's going to get pinched for Priest trying to play his life. Abizi's there to help, and somehow Atlanta Faze come out on top of that one. I thought they were all screwed inside of that B house, but all good, and there we go. They bounce back. Everybody wins there one on ones. Yeah, it didn't look great because usually yeah, after the offense, and you get to those spots without losing anybody, like you're in a great position, but. Where the teamwork and the crossfire was in question yesterday, there it looked very good for FaZe. Great help when people were in trouble. And they'll get the round win, a much needed one, considering the hot start from Empire. And when we take a look at the reverse sweeps this season, and we talked about it with FaZe, they did it so much in the middle of the year. They led the way. They had three this year more than any other team. This is a different beast, though. In a best yeah, of nine. Uh, it's like different a giant beast. broom. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like a, it's a giant broom. Uh, I mean, but it's going to take that, a, lot of, a lot of power. A lot you gotta of teamwork. You got to think, though, those spots they were put in the mid-year could be big for them here. They know they have the chance, the potential to come back in these spots, but there's Illy with the first blood. A nice position from Illy. He's just trying to play his life now. Like, it's almost like his job is done, and I love that. Just get away. Shotzi with dead silence through the middle. I think he heard that door open to his right. That was a beezy, but Major Maniac was ready for it. He's watching his teammates back. We're into a four versus four. Where does FaZe want to go with this bomb? And well, I think they were thinking A, but now it might be a B hit. Because Clayster, he's going to take down Selian. You still have Hook and Krim stacked up inside. Abizi's got dead to use. They'll hear the door, but that's a massive gunfight win for Abizi and opening. But Hook is still here. Rotating over quickly is going to be Illy now trying to get in position. Bomb planted four phase. Now a three versus three. Nice movement from Illy. Nice movement from Hook. All down to Major Maniac as everything falls apart. The Simtex is in. They're on the defuse. He's going to have to challenge. Trying to get he the can angle. Win it. Win he the can first. win it. He's got to get the shot. He, got it. he had to Wait. reload. Did he get the kill? No, no Empire gets the defuse. I think he ran out of ammo. He gets all the oh. kills, but has swap to the pistol oh no i actually can't believe clay hopped that 
Why well, that is a stone cold hop. A two versus one. You're just playing the trade, right? You know his position. Clay's just like, all right, I'm going to get on it. Man, Major Maniac almost with a one versus three. The and Dallas dude, Empire, the retake on point. And I didn't see what he had left in his M4, if he has had no bullets or what the situation was, but he tried to finish him. He must have killed him in instant after the fuse, but what a play from our game field feature player in Clayster. The hop, the stick, the win. Now a two-round advantage. We'll see if Krim can locate another opening pick from this position. Lots of action towards Cafe. A kill for either side. And this is when you look at like your players like a BZ. Just give you those man advantages in the round. Freesta might have a position through middle of the map. Simp on the B site. Able to take one down. I don't know where, where Shotzi is. Shotzi is somehow still alive. Shotzi is somehow still alive. Continues to finesse. Illy has his back. Selium was trying to get there for the trade. And there's another one of these scenarios, Maven, where you have the man advantage. Shotzi makes the play. Bomb is down. And now it's a two versus three. You have a two on two towards the site, though. His Clayster has yet to start to move this across. So they've got a moment to make the play. Clay's going to fall. Clay's going to have to go. Clay's trying to wrap and get into position. Can they pick this up? shotzi has got dead silence. Clay's going to get caught. All on now. Regular season MVP to try and make the play. There's the first now in the 1v2 down to a 1 versus 1. But it's Major with the read and the defuse. What a nutty round it is to get phases second on the board. Yeah, they needed Major. Maybe uh, may maybe Clay's antics and the way they've been hopping on defuses. Maybe that gets in shots. He's had a little bit of, I got to check this bomb. I got to check this. Doesn't want the defuse to come in. Oh man, what a retake. And as you said, yeah, the timing where Clay is just so far away from his teammates. They take advantage of that. Yeah, and it's tough because you don't know what wrap they're going to take. You're trying to hold yep. maybe bottom or top cafe on the push. But that's why I was putting so much emphasis on it. Like you have a two on two for a second. You got to take it. And they're able to do it. So now either team winning routes really at a, a man disadvantage. But Selium, another slow start to a search and destroy where he's been terrific all year. Dead silence comes up. I thought Hook had the kill as we swap POVs, but Priesta and Semp both able to win their ones. The B site cracked wide open. Elite right, and Kramer we, are so close, though. We saw this a lot yesterday. Now can they win a round with these advantages? Illy's going to bring it back. Makes it a four versus three. I like this from Priest to Not take again. your time. Not but again. It's, uh, yeah. Not again. 3v3, man. Uh, you throw away a two-man advantage. Easy gets a huge one though. They needed a kill to slow the tide that was Empire, but they still haven't got the bomb planted with just under 40 to go. Empire grouping up around Cafe. Illy can't quite finish it. The flood comes in. The team kill comes through as he was tagged up and had to back up. The shots hit on the cross though, and FaZe hit the shots to close it out. They almost blunder the 5v3, but they're able to get the round victory. And yeah, I guess that was a, a lot of the same from yesterday. Mm -hmm. but this time, at least you clutch up and win it. Yeah, Clay, Clay, I, I think Ilya was really weak. He probably goes down anyways. But yeah, the team kill yeah, comes yeah. through. Maybe if that doesn't happen, there's a two versus two. Clay with some nice shots, able to take down Priest off the bomb. Well, you saw the Major two players like on top position. of each other. They were yeah. on top of each yeah. other. He just kills yep. them both at the same yep. time. I like, guess just collateral damage, right? <laughs> A lot of B hits. When do we see our first A hit? In simp. Uh, Second time he's caught. Yeah, two times in a row. He's trying to get in that position to hold the site, but it's taken down. The timing just not there for him, and Krim has the angle again. 5v3 now for Empire. Reese gets caught as well. Uh, he was spotted by Clay. Maybe he had a... Well, okay. Oh, Illy trying to stay alive. I was going to say maybe... Maybe Priest have found a timing. Play works the flank. Two versus five. That is bomb down. Now a 2v4. And again, there is a shot. He had jumped over one from that spot. This time it's going to be hard. Third step. Who put the stairs there? <laughs> BZ one versus four. A legion of players swarming around him. He's been able to stay up for now. He's got dead silence to work with. He spotted one on the flank. Goes for the challenge, but can't take the fight. Empire get it again. And... Yeah, I mean, Krim with another massive first blood as Simp tries to hit the cross of the boxes.
And you see the like the stun is trying to hit Grim to make the, the shot a little bit more difficult on him. But they're going to have to start like smoking that out if they want Sim to get there or something. Because we, we see when Sim does get to B, he's finding kills. He's playing his life really well. But as you said it, yes, yeah, we saw it in the first round. You saw it right there. Grim is just, uh, yeah, easy pick. He's now down one and back to offense. BC, yet another first blood in this matchup. Hook ripped off the map quickly. They want to work towards A. Shotzi going to be the lone man low. Now he does have dead silence to work with. I don't know how Simp is spotted here. Play from the players from Sandbag. As you said, Shotzi finessing around. I'm going to make this a 4v4, but look at the bomb. The bomb is inside of A. So right now, a BZ and Simp, they need to play their lives. They have to play their life so well because that's what Dallas are going to focus on. Inside, though, Selim and Parisa each going to get their kills. Another one of those scenarios that just scares me if you're Atlanta phase. This time, looks a little bit cleaner. Shotzi going to get caught out. Simp puts him down. Crim6 now last alive. The movement simply too much to handle at close range with the M4 and phase. Tie it up 4-4. Little slide cancel and snap from a BZ. And you saw it from an input in four players POV who's kind of holding how difficult that is to deal with. It is a nightmare. I just want to see. Okay, so like Dallas is, you know, B, 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 B. Is, is this a time now where you go A? Because Atlanta's probably thinking, how the heck do we defend this site? Right? How, right. how do we defend yeah. this? Like right Sim back switched to it, it up. Yeah, Sim switched it up. He's like, I'm out of there. I'm going to a different spot. Increased his POV from Sandbags. Illy, though, with the first blood. Right behind the door. He's right behind the door. The reads there from Priesta, but who simply too strong wins the gunfight. Simp, though, gets a kill, resets his daddy, and gets away with his life, so they'll only be down a man as Selium is still lurking in the bee house, and he hears that door. Here they come. Shotzi's got his daddy pop. He slides on in, and once again, you see how hard that movement is to deal with. Shotzi just smokes him. 40 seconds to go. Another 2v4 for FaZe. Dallas taking their time. They know there's a couple of openings. Clay's worried about his life. He's just playing. Very patient. Major Maniac might get some great timing here. Trying to deal with the bomb planner, and he does. So, the force a 2v3, but a quick trade for Millie. All up to Simp now. And Simp is no close. daddy. Close, it's close. Millie gets out, though. That's huge. Yeah, you, you see Simp. That's who he was trying to find. Simp has a smoke to work with. Maybe he can make a miracle happen, but no M4. And that's the weapon you would love to have in this position. 30 seconds to go. There's the dead silence pop. The clutch up in the 1v3. Just so little time to work with and everything covered by Empire. There's the first pick, but Clay in position gets the kill. Now Empire one round away from being crowned your 22, 2020 champs. They are so, so close, Joe. Early first bloods on offense give them such an advantage. Now, can they win it with a defensive round? All the pressure on Atlanta face to get us to a round 11. And FaZe will have to get there on offense. BC just barely gets out with his life. Look at the stack towards Cafe and the smoke out. Here they come. The flood's going to be on through. Shot through the smoke for Krim. What? Krim is making the play. Krim will drop. But he does the damage. He's been massive in this series. Maze on cell. The play going all the way around. Shotzi gets the call out. Shotzi makes the two versus four. What feels like the 15th 2v4 for FaZe. They've been put in so many bad spots. In this search and destroy, does it end here? Empire can smell it. They're all trying they to get Major Maniac. It. They're all isolating him. They're all isolating Major Maniac. He's trying to play his life. He's trying to stay alive. Simp backs up to help him. But they have 30 seconds, maybe. They have to go. 
Everywhere you look, you just see Empire go. players. Time ticking. Second by second, FaZe's dream of a championship is disappearing. Every window, every door, there's somebody. It's a ludicrous gunfight win for Sim, but will it be enough? Just 12 seconds to go. Seemingly nothing that he can do, and there's the final kill. Dallas Empire, get it done. They are your 2020 Call of Duty League champions. Crim6, now undisputedly the greatest Call of Duty player of all time. Clayster goes back to back to get his third chip as well. And for the youngsters in Illy, Hook, and Shotzi, their lives are forever, forever changed. You see Clay getting hyped up right there, showing you three. Hook smiling, Shotzi smiling. Man, they just, I, they were so good all year long. So consistent, and they worked their tails off to get into this position. What a couple of weeks it's been for them. We'll just enjoy them celebrating and just think about this moment for somebody like Shotzi. Your first year competing in Call of Duty Esports, you're the regular season MVP. You win the entire championship. Unbelievable, and I think you can just see the happiness on his face, just a smile and looking to enjoy it. For Krim and Clay, yeah, both the three. You saw the three and they joined very, very elite company with this win. That was special. Fireworks, baby, they're going off outside of Verdansk. I love that. You know where I'm headed tonight right after this? I'm going to Verdansk. Uh, I am as well. I, I definitely will, but awesome to see all the fireworks, all the things we have integrated inside the game. Look at that. Dallas Empire, our 2020 champs. The stadium is blue. Now they just need us sitting in there, Joe. Like, they seem like a 3D yeah, like, a CGI build of just a bunch of Maven and Mercs just sitting in there clapping. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've seen this. This is awesome. Got the trophy there. What Empire gonna have the throne? 1.5 million dollars. Uh, oh, does that look good? Think about it. You got the yeah, the cash, the trophy, the ring, the throne, the head. Like they, they just there's what the the Jordans. Like there's so they much all the stuff swag. to go with. They got everything. They got all the swags, and there it is. One more time, everybody watching, give it up for Dallas Empire, your Call of Duty League 2020 champions. Special, special stuff from a team that made it work all season long, and this one has got to be sweet. Yeah, I would hope it's the most money ever, baby. I hope it's sweet. It better be. <laughs> 1.5 million dollars sounds sweet to me, that's for sure. Yeah, that's, that's a bit of cash. And I know another thing just to kind of nail on top of this too. It's like it's the first year, right? Like you've set this stage to build maybe a future dynasty with this team. It's the inaugural season of the Call of Duty League, and yeah, were there bumps in the road? Yeah, big old speed bumps. When you think about the global pandemic and the, the quick pivot to be made online, and we already talk about these players and how they've got to be more versatile than maybe any other esport. When you think about the title changing year over year and what they had to deal with this year, you can take a lot of pride with this. A lot of pride for those five players that get it done. It's just, it's incredible when you think about the difference of what it means to these guys. Like, yes, it's all a win. And yes, the money's all there. But the different stages they are on in, in their career, it's yeah. just truly, truly wild. And Krim, you did it, buddy. I know there's been debates on both sides. Karma, Krim, who's the greatest? There's no debate. Krim6 is the greatest player of all time. And you deserve it. You deserve it, especially after how he played in that final. And the kills mm -hmm. there in the final round to close it out to make sure it didn't get to a round 11. You are a truly special player. It's been a privilege to commentate your career. Unbelievable stuff. But we are going to hop to our scuff play of the game. And, well, it's when Clayster hops the bomb and Major Maniac almost makes the clutch. But what a ludicrous round it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty wild, uh, to, to say the least. Uh, Major Maniac almost goes massive and clutches the one versus three. and. Typically in these scenarios, when you know where the player is, it's just a fast trade. Uh, I think there was still like 24 seconds left 
uh, on the bomb clock to, to work with. But bomb gets planted here. It's a three versus three. The Illy really opens things up with dead silence. Who can side of this be building just able to stay alive? But Clay, he goes for it. Uh, he does. Major Maniac able to take down one. And yeah, what? There's, what, 30 seconds left and he's on it? Like, they know his spot. I, I don't know what these comms are like. Like, yeah, just watch over me. But yeah, I think he just runs out of bullets. Doesn't have enough in the clip. And that was a pivotal round. Gives them that two-round advantage. But yeah, big props to everybody for Dallas Empire. I mean, what? Astro, Rambo, okay. the entire team. Congrats to everyone. And Joe, it's been a pleasure, man. First year of the CDL. Yeah, you're done. I've loved commentating with you and hopefully to many, many more. We hope the fans have enjoyed it. Shout out to our production team with some of the brilliant graphics and just a smooth show all weekend long. But it's Clay, the back, the back, ready with the interview. We'll toss it right over to Lando. Thank you so much, Clint. Yes, it is your instant reaction brought to you by PlayStation. I am joined by Clayster. Buddy, let me just start off by saying congratulations, a world championship, $1.5 million. Tell me, how do you feel right now? Oh, man, I, I feel amazing. I feel so good to go back to back, add another ring here onto the finger. You know, man, like this is a dream come <laughs> true. This is a resurgence this late in my career, and, you know, it, it's all props to my teammates. Shout out to them, man. Absolutely. Well, Clay, what, just last year, I know we already talked about it a little bit, but the big conversation, the big discussion was how it had been 1,400 days since you won a major title. You told me that there were personal doubts. There were thoughts of, uh, what, possibly hanging it up. Now you've won back-to-back -back world championships. Tell me, what has this past year and a half been like for you? The one word we've used for this year is adversity. We've been throwing so much stuff our way, man, and had so much stuff just not go our way, and so many, you know, failures and so many just really not putting it together. And and whether it's the host or the players game or whatever, whatever it is, we just we've been screwed all year. And so for us to persevere all year, get a top two seed, winning two game fives to make it through winners, and then have that kind of dominant performance right there, like, dude, man, like we deserve this ring more than anybody else. We've worked so hard for this and the kids have worked so hard for this. I'm beyond proud of the effort that we all put in and I really couldn't have asked for more. It, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I'm so, 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 so happy. Like it, it's just adversity, man. We, we're just, we persevere yeah. no matter what. Well, I gotta tell you, and speaking of adversity, I remember back in, what, 2015, when you won your first world championship, the storyline was what? Throw me to the Wolves, I'll come back leading the pack. Now you're the last one standing out of the Twins and the Tiny Terrors from the E United roster from last year. Tell me, my friend, how do you manage to keep on doing it? Oh, man, I don't... I, I think sheer determination to be the best in the world. I mean, you know, I kind of... Um, was a little salty that I wasn't teaming with any of my old United teammates and they all kind of thought like I was the wing link on the team and um to like come out here and to to play how we did and even in that finals to win how we did um you know it, it just proves to myself that I'm not the wing link it proves to myself that I still have it. it it proves to me and everyone around me that you know I'm a back to back world champion three time champion now made over Can you guys hear me? I think we might have uh I think we might have lost Clayster there for a moment. We'll make sure to get him back. I think Shotzi was maybe interested on get back into uh getting on to this interview, folks. But of course, like I said, we'll get Clayster back. We'll make sure to talk on what was an absolutely incredible series, as Clayster was kind of alluding to it. Obviously, the adversity the team's had to deal with this year, which we'll uh we'll definitely be touching on a little bit more here in just a little a while but clayster thank you so much for your time i'm glad we got a chance to talk for a little bit as this was your instant reaction brought to you by playstation a massive congrats to the dallas empires the city of dallas is celebrating tonight more awesome cod coverage to come we'll see you in just a moment